I literally just bought that little one series. You've seen me drive it home. <laughs> what is, I mean, that is not happy, is it? Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so this is, a, this is just gonna be a quick update. No, it's gonna be a quick intro to quite possibly, or almost definitely, the worst car I've ever bought from auction. Um, and I bought it a long while ago, months ago. As any of you loyal subscribers will have seen, you would have seen me buy this car, you would have seen me get, get excited, you would have seen me get sucked in to what happens at auction. No matter how long you've been in this trade, sometimes you just get a bit sucked in and you think, do you know what, I'm just gonna keep bidding because there's money in this car, there's profit in this car. Well, we're talking about the little red diesel BMW 1 Series, which I bought months and months ago. Oh, look at that. Escort the route as well. Good bit of the way. You've got to be seeing this one. Seven again. Eight. Eight again. Seven. Eight hundred. 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 Nine. Nine is there. You win. Fifteen. Thousand. Thousand again. Fifteen. Thousand. Fifteen. Thousand. Fifteen. Eight. Eleven. 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 Fifteen. Eleven. Fifteen. Eleven. Fifteen. Twelve. Twelve again. Twelve hundred. Fifteen. Twelve. 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 Fifteen. But I think it's I think it's entitled what not to do at a car auction, something like that. There was a little bit on the thumbnail saying I got sucked in. I did get sucked in. So for those of you that are not in the motor trade, when this car trade price with service history and clean condition, blah blah blah, is sixteen hundred pounds, you've got to realise that no matter what you bid, there's about four to five hundred pounds worth of fees on top of this, no matter what sort of account you've got to a normal motor dealer so anyone that's in the motor trade and this car is sort of around 1400 pound now you should be ducking out you don't know if it's got any service history shouldn't really be bidding any more than this i should be ducking out right now 14, 21, 14, 21, 15, 14, 15, 14, 17, 15. 15, 15, 21, 15, 21, 15, 15, 15, 15, 17, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 25, 15, 16, 16, 16, 17, 16, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, it's now over two grand <laughs> and I'm still bidding. Uh, uh, <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, twenty one, twenty five. You interact twenty one, fifty. 2175, I don't know. 2175, you're in the rap. 22, 22, but he goes in. 25, 2225. 15. You're in. 2225, what's twice? 2215. Should have a set. And I'll tell you why I'm doing a little intro to it because it's not going to make any sense. One, to people that aren't subscribers that didn't see us buy that car. And if I just go straight into it, they'll think, you know, you're going to think, well, where'd you get it from? This is what happened after we bought that car from auction the next day i think it was let's let's just roll this bit so dad's just dropped me off it's friday night at about eight o'clock and i'm here to pick up my bmw my girls are at badgers learning st john's there's my trade plate on the floor put me back one in I'll tell you what <laughs> Get the old mats out again. That's genuine BM mats. Marvellous. It even smells nice in this car. I'll tell you what. Hold on. 
can't get in. See if the old easy access works. One, two. Three, look at that, look. Such a good idea that is, so the window goes down, so you can get in over the window. I'm gonna put the mat in, so my journey home is a little bit more comfortable with the mat in. Oh, look at that. Does it go back up? Oh, look. Marvellous. So I think what we'll do, we'll put the tray plates in and we'll drive home. I've already checked the oil, checked the coolant, everything's all right. Let's get going home. Right, let's put this aircon on. Now I know the aircon works already because I tried it before I bought the car when I nipped in. Put that forward a little bit. Off we go. Tray plates are in. So this is where, right, I need that a little bit lower than that. It's a BMW. You don't drive like too far up. That's better. So this is where, two miles up the road, I find out that someone's just turned the DPF light off on this car and it only comes on after you've been driving a little bit so it didn't come on when it went through the halls well seems all right so far so what what would i like from this journey so right you've seen how much this owes me 2600 pounds already this car I'm not going to drive it hard now it's only cold and let it warm up air comms nice and cold oh is that a bit loud let me turn that down Right, so what would I like from this journey? I would like this car to not have any noises. We're doing 65. The rear diff isn't noisy. That would have been making a noise by now. These do suffer with rear diffs. BMWs do suffer with rear diffs. That would be noisy by now if that was going to be noisy. It's not noisy. There is no wobble on the steering wheel. There's no knocks. There's no bangs. This road surface is really bad, so I'll wait till we get on the next road surface, give the brakes a little test to see if the brakes are warped, because it feels like every other car that I buy has got warped brake discs for some strange reason. I don't know why. I mean, warped brake discs isn't the end of the world, especially when I can fit in myself and stuff. However, the margin on this car is not going to be very big. Oh, this road's concrete as well. Let's do a quick brake test. Oh, they're not warped. Well, do you know what? So far, so good on this car. A little bit of sunroof action. I know the sunroof works because I checked that as well. Might be a bit noisy. Oh, that's noisy. Nice to have a little bit of daylight coming in. So yeah, so I bought this car last night. Spoke to you guys on the way home when I was in the other BMW. And then I've been busy all day, so I haven't had time to come and pick it up. But my dad said he could run me up. They're going away for the weekend. So I thought I'd come and pick it up now whilst the girls are at one of their after school clubs. And then I should get home just in time for them. And then, it, and then this will be at home. will be a bit far down the queue as far as preparing goes. But I'll get onto it at some point. I don't want to spend too much time on this car. And I don't want to spend too much time on this car because one, I'd like to get it up for sale fairly quickly, and two, there is not a lot of money. I mean, can you imagine if that other guy weren't at the auction and I bought this for 1,300 pound plus fees or something? That would be a bargain, and it would make the whole auction experience great again. But it just isn't. It's hard at the moment because there isn't enough cars to go around, especially cheap cars, and there still isn't enough cars to go around. If this was a petrol, well, actually, scratch that, because if this was a two litre petrol, I never would have bought it. The two litre petrol in this era of BMW, one series, three series, don't buy it, the two litre. It's a horrible engine, horrendously unreliable, made out of chocolate, don't buy it. But because it's a two litre diesel, yes, they suffer from time and change. This one isn't noisy, but it was a bit of a gamble. I got in it before I bought it and I revved it up. So it isn't noisy. So, so far, I'm quite liking this car. I'm happy so far. No lights on. 
no noises, no vibrations, no balance problems, aircon works, radio works, radio works, seems all right. Well, we've done 15 miles, stopped at a fuel station, got some diesel, everything seems to be all right, no lights on, getting a bit dark. It's not very fast, but it goes all right. I mean, it's, I mean, who's going to buy this car? Just someone that wants something, probably that floats up and down a dual carriageway every day to work. Maybe a bit more of a commuter's car because it's a diesel, and it'll, do, and it'll return some really good fuel economy figures. I mean, it's red. Let's be honest, it isn't a very manly car. It's a nice car, but I wouldn't say it's a very manly car. So, I mean, would a would a girly buy this car? Maybe. I don't know. It's got a sunroof, it's got black leather. I don't know. I don't know. But so far, so good. We'll get it home. We'll park it up. What is going on? I literally just bought that little one series. You've seen me drive it home. <laughs> what is, I mean, that is not happening, is it? That was good as gold on the way home, and now the suspension's collapsed. It hasn't even moved. <laughs> oh, good lord. That little car was probably not a very good purchase. I'm really, really glad that Simon was here. Because the old Halford's Jack would not be going underneath that. At that coil snap and just completely gone over the bottom cup. <laughs> you know what? I've never seen a spring go like that. Spring has gone so bad, there's nothing left up the top, up the top at all. That's jumped over the cup all the way down. I mean, it's nearly taken the brake hose with it. Problem is now I can't move the car. I've never seen one go that bad all the way down to be rubbing. I mean, I've got the brake hose out now, but it literally kinked the brake hose up, bent that bracket, rubbing up against the ABS sensor, but it was rubbing, but it didn't go anywhere. So, you know, it didn't, it was on the protected bit. But, but I mean, it's just, if that had happened driving along, oh, don't bear thinking about. right guys so we're back we're back on the one series and it's been a while as you can see by the look and the color of the disc it's, it's becoming i just see i've been meaning to take this shock off get the spring done get the one series done but with with all the other cars and you sit so i had an epiphany this morning because do you know what you would have seen the, you would have seen the video for claire's car the e60 so i bought this for the e60 off ebay um, because the e60 didn't come with one it probably did from factory but someone probably stole it and then put it on ebay and i've probably bought the original one back off the car but this will fit this now the wheel won't fit that because it rubs on the spring because it's too wide but that is a space saver i can fit that to this car drive it to the garage they can put a new spring on it and it won't take me any time. Yes, it'll cost me a little bit of money, but it doesn't matter. You have gotta work out what, what is more valuable and the time the not spent on this is more valuable. So I'm gonna put it on there and see how it goes. Hopefully, it will drive fine. I haven't got to go far, we'll see. Well, it's on and it's real low. Let's see how it drives. See how we get on. Yeah. 
made it, people. So when that spring failed, it wasn't long after I bought the car, as you saw. And because it's an old car, you know, the thought of trying to get all of that off on my back, on a jack, you know it's never going to come off. You know everything's going to be seized up. You know you're never going to, you'll get halfway through the job after spending hours on it, wishing that you had never done it. So we, we took it to Hadley Tyres, and what actually happened, I didn't record it for some strange reason, I don't know why, but the, the shock had actually failed, put an unnecessary pressure on the spring. Because of that, the spring snapped. So we ended up putting a spring and a shock on it. We looked at the other side, here's a picture of the other side. The other side was fine, because I mean, that broke, that was not a good one. I'm, I'm guessing whenever they break, you know, I'm guessing people will have had that on BMWs, on one series out there watching this video so we got that sorted and after i got that sorted i took it back to the yard to my old yard and obviously that was that was when all of this was going on you know mid-summer tail end of summer when all of the new site was going on we i was every i was at the new site every day trying to get it ready and that car with everything else that it needed obviously i haven't prepped it i haven't touched it it was just a bit too much for my brain to consume. So I just sort of forgot about the car for a, for a bit, probably for, probably for like a good month, maybe even longer than that. And then I thought I'll start driving it. I'll drive it for a couple of weeks, like I do, like this, like this old Mondeo, trusty old Mondeo. I thought I'd start driving it for a couple of weeks to make sure the car's all right. And that's what I did. And it was all right for a bit. And then this noise started appearing. And I tell you what, I knew what the noise was. It's the dreaded noise on that two litre diesel. And somehow in 10 years, I've managed to swerve it. And then this noise started. And I mean, I think I know what the noise is, was, whatever. So I took it to Hemmingstone BMW and let them have a look at it to confirm what I thought it might be. And this is what happened. So I'll tell you what, as with my normal consistency of my working week, when I made that video and said, let's go to Hemmingstone BMW, I didn't go to Hemmingstone BMW. This is weeks later. <laughs> However, we are in the Red One series now. And you know what, I've got a little... I know it's got problems, this car, but I've got a bit of a soft spot for this little car. And it, it drives really well, which is probably the biggest problem. If it, was a, if it was an absolute pile of poo, I would just cut my losses on it, make a loss on it, get rid of it in the trade or whatever, and, and just move on to the next one and use the money for something else. But after, I mean, after 10 years of buying a lot of BMWs with this N47 diesel in it, I mean, this is one of the earlier N47s and most people that will know about these cars know they have time and chain problems. 111 isn't the end of the world if this thing's got history. Yeah, all right, it could have a rattly time and chain at 111, but it also could not start rattling until 180,000 miles. And when they start getting noisy, they sound a bit like, a bit like a wind noise in the passenger footwell, a bit like a ch -ch 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 -ch, that sort of noise. And this one is doing it. But when I bought this car from auction, you know, when it was cold and I revved it up, I didn't hear that. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem to do it anywhere near as bad when it's cold. When it warms up, it gets worse. But I mean, somehow I've managed to dodge it for 10 years. I mean, I was obviously due to get caught out with buying one. And if I was ever going to get caught out, it was going to be with a 111,000 no history car. So it sounds like I have got caught out with this one. But I mean, if I, I want you guys to try and hear it. So... Oh, blimey, hold on. That is very much flooded and I won't be going through there. Wow, we won't be going that way. My God, look at the flood. Everywhere's underwater. <laughs> okay, we won't be going that way. We're going to have to find another way. So, I mean, if I, can, if I can try and show you the noise, what I'll do, I'll take my microphone off. I'll put it down in that passenger footwell. I'll point it. Can you hear that noise? It's like a sort of, it's like a whooshing noise. Hopefully you can hear it. Hold on, let, let me stop and put my mic back on. Hopefully you can hear that. I mean, it's, it's, it is literally like a mechanical noise. But I tell you what, 
I don't really know why I'm driving a Hemingstone BMW for them to tell me what I already know, but I feel a little bit like I'm cracking up a bit. And I sort of want them to tell me, yeah, Kev, it's noisy. This is how much it's going to cost. And this is what you're going to have to do to fix it. So we'll go there and we'll let them say the same thing. <laughs> I'll see you in a minute. I hear that. There's two of them in there. What? Oh, I can hear it. I can hear something. They're, they're confused by it. You're confused, didn't you? Oh, it is noisy. Yeah, okay. Is it what is it what I thought it was? Is it what I thought it was? Really? Oh. Kev's looking too though. Don't say that just because you don't, don't give me that. You're just saying that trying to be nice. It doesn't sound like trains. Does it? No. And I think it's more that side. I half wonder whether it's a, a pulley, one of them pulleys. The best thing to do is take the belt off and run it. Isn't it? You take the belt off and run it. Or train, run it without a belt. Eliminate the pulleys then. But I think it's more here. Somewhere here. Yeah, I just said it was down that side. Normally when it's chains, yeah. you'll hear rattling this side, really. Really? Oh. But well, what about when you get in it, though? Because it sounds like straight in the foot well, doesn't it? Yeah. And I'm guessing the chains are at the back there, aren't they? So They are. But I like the optimism of that it might not be it. I mean, that's almost Christmas. So Kev's had enough. He's gone back into the workshop. Yeah. And Carl think So you think chains are normally here from that side? Normally you hear from this side. Mm -hmm. Generally, when it's a cold, um, obviously you've got different symptoms this time. Um, we were hearing it from this side. Yeah. Um, it's obviously worse when it's warm. But yeah, tends to get rattles from this side, the driver's side of the car. This trains go slack, the lack, lack of oil pressure and things like that make them rattle. Um, so yeah, I think you just feel a bit unlucky, mate. I have been unlucky. Generally, we've had the belts off. The belt still does off. it. Yeah, we've taken the alternator belt off, so nothing's turning. It's not really no worth you coming is... for a drive with me, is it? Because you can hear it. I can hear it. Yeah, yeah, you can hear it. So we probably won't sort of. We probably won't say anything more than what we already know. If you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but yeah, nothing else is turning. We've taken the alternator belt off. The pulleys aren't turning. The alternator's not turning. So the only thing that's really left inside the engine or is turning is the, is the cam chain itself so yeah <laughs> it's gonna sit around for another six months now <laughs> <laughs> there we go let's get out of here so do you know what that sort of makes me feel a little bit better because they listen to noisy chains every day they said it doesn't sound like what they normally sound like but clearly it's got a noise. I feel a bit better about that because I feel like I've let myself down not hearing that noise when I bought this car. And sort of that noise alone has allowed me to make this a big problem in my head and just park the car up and forget about it rather than deal with it. So as of now, the little one series is booked in to have a new time and chain. And you know what? I mean, they've said, they've said most, <laughs> most car dealers that they, have seen or heard about would sell it like this but the reality is with that i mean they are right on i'm sure they would but the reality is of that that as soon as someone else gets in this car it drives without fault as soon as someone else gets in here and says what's that funny noise you know they, then it, that and then 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 you end up with the phone call that no car dealer likes or well i don't like them anyway i'm 
not very good at dealing with them at all. So as of now, the One Series is still here, still in stock. The journey, I say what, the next journey on this car, we'll get the timing chains done, we'll get the front, we'll get the exhaust flexi done, because that's noisy as well. And then we'll get the journey of this car on, but the finances, we, you know, we're gonna make a fairly big loss on this car. There's no getting around that. We are gonna make a fairly big loss. It already owes me three grand almost because of the shock and the spring and buying the car. You know, it's over, it's over a grand to get the chain done. And the, so we're gonna make a loss on it, but we'll get back to that when it's done. So as of now, thanks for watching this one, everyone. Apologies about the, the massive delay. I mean, it's a massive delay. When do, I can't even remember when I bought this car. What was it? Well, I mean, it was summertime, wasn't it, last year? <laughs> All I'm gonna say is, thanks for watching this one, everyone. Appreciate the likes, the comments. Hit that subscribe button if you like what's going on. You know, it's, uh, drop us a comment. Let us know how we're getting on. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks a lot. See you later.